guys. How's everybody doing today? A long time since I updated you this way. I apologize. It took me three times just to turn the video on correctly because today is a tremory day. This tremor, um, well, I'm a little bit sick of it. <laughs> but it is what it is. I hate that saying, it is what it is. <clears throat> anyway, it's a side effect of the most important medication that I take. And we've gone down a little bit in dosage, so it's no longer as bad as it used to be. But when it's bad, not only can I not really easily um, drink coffee or feed myself or organize my pills, but my legs, um, I don't know how many of you remember the old cartoons, um, like really old, like from the 40s, how um, the, the characters were often drawn with legs that were just all rubbery. Like they, sometimes they didn't even have a knee. And uh, so the, the characters could do all kinds of really funny walks. Um, those old cartoons crack me up, except when my own legs feel like that. It's, um, it, <clears throat> You feel like you're, you know, I mean, standing up and or walking even, uh, not, in addition to just the things you try to coordinate with your hands, feel um, your legs just feel like you have no stable. You know what you feel like is one of those long, tall, skinny met people with the air being pumped up through them. And they go, you know, fruit, fruit, fruit. And sometimes you, all the way down to the ground before they bounce up again and everything. That's what it feels like. And it makes your, um, you also feel as though you were actually moving that way in that it makes you dizzy and a little nauseous. So, uh, Yeah, you get it. It's not much fun. And hey, I can breathe. I can breathe and I can breathe well enough that the tremors are the most annoying thing rather than trying to catch my breath. But oh, I get, I get really sick of it. And uh, my, my housemate that keeps me laughing all the time has now been away to uh, see family and do some ministry for almost a week. And I did not in any way, I mean, I did, I know what a mood booster he is. But this week of, number one, I had my first migraine, the real kind of migraine. I've had the cluster headaches and, um, and the visual, uh, halo kind of headaches for a long time. And those are really in the migraine category. But I had never had one that made you feel nauseous and like your head really could possibly explode. <coughs> and <coughs> I don't know why my voice is so raspy. I think because with nobody in the house, I don't talk much. So it's kind of uh, out of uh, practice um, but anyway so yeah migraine headache with the light sensitivity and and uh, noise sensitivity and that for the first time so Tuesday I missed rehab because um, I had some pain medication left that I doubled up on because I was just in uh, Tylenol didn't touch it and I was in too much pain so very shortly after I got up that day, I took some pills and went right back to bed and slept until four o'clock in the afternoon. But when I woke up, the headache was gone. So 
I was happy about that. Um, and all of this stuff that I tell you about, all these side effects, they're so well documented for people on Tacro and a couple of the antivirals and antibiotics that I take cause some things. And I didn't really, I took my pulmonologist's word for it because he knows everything. So I hadn't ever really looked up the side effects for a lot of these meds. And I decided that I should look that, all that up for myself and look at the things online that the company wants the patients to know. And like 75% of TACRO uh, uh, users have m headaches, um, lightheadedness, and the whole tremor deal. The tremor was the highest of them all and um, of all the different things that can happen. Nausea is from some of them. And so anyway, um, I had a migraine headache and missed rehab on Tuesday. And, but I, I've been thinking a lot about rehab anyway. And I'm gonna, when I see Dr. Uh, I almost said Dr. Jacopi Oh, Dr. Jacopi, there in Hawaii. I hope you know how well I'm doing and that I got my transplant. He was my first pulmonologist over in Medford and still has a soft spot in my heart. But the person I see now is also fabulous and that's Dr. Saya. And I'm gonna ask him about pulmonary rehab when I go to see him uh, next Thursday, six days from now, because it seems I, I generally am not a wimp about doing my exercise and doing what I have to do to uh, keep my muscles fit and everything, but I feel so exhausted the day after rehab usually that it has started to really discourage me. And I was kind of like, oh good, I've got a migraine, I don't have to go to rehab. <laughs> which is definitely not the way to look at pulmonary rehab, but I just really think that, uh, I think I think they work me too hard. Yesterday, I did two miles because after the tremors went away about three o'clock, I was able to walk the halls. And so I did a seven mile, seven lap, um, of the, seven laps of the floor here in my apartment building uh, at about 4.35 in the afternoon. And then I still felt energetic at 10.30. So I did five more for a total of two miles yesterday. And um, it was at my own pace and I didn't have anybody telling me how long I had to stay on the treadmill, even after I just got, you know, they, they work you until you're a dish rag there. And uh, I'm not sure that's the right approach for me. I seem to tolerate it a lot better if I don't have to go at a certain time, twice a week, spend an hour doing too much as far as I'm concerned. And then when, because it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm just wiped out can hardly stay awake, never mind do anything. Whereas if I do several shorter sessions over the course of the day, it doesn't wipe me out that much and I feel better the next day than I started off that day. Although today is an exception to that because the tremors still haven't gone away and I'm just waiting to be able to walk. So. Um, but anyway, so I have to talk to Dr. Jacopi about, huh, again, Jacopi. I have to talk to Dr. Saya in a week and figure out what we can figure out about um, pulmonary rehab. Because it's also not really tailored to lung transplant patients. And this is because it's always the pulmonary part of it is always squeezed in there with the cardiac part of it. It's called cardiopulmonary rehab. And 
with a person who was still, say you're a person who had a heart attack, but before that you were still working, you were still doing everything you needed to do, and then you have this heart attack and it sets you back by a few weeks and they put you into cardio rehab, okay? Part of cardiopulmonary rehab, but it's all the same room, it's all the same people, and it seems like everybody's doing pretty much the same thing. So these cardiac patients come out relatively healthy, except they had a heart attack, but now they're on their recovery. And they have me working at the same pace as those people, when what I had was an incredibly complex major surgery involving sawing through ribs and rewiring and putting in a lung that is foreign to my body, putting me on eight or ten different new medications that I'll have to be on the rest of my life, and, uh, and, and working me as though I were, I mean seriously, we're not doing anything different. And uh, I don't overstate it when I say that my body is a lot less capable than somebody who just had a heart attack. I was sick for nine years. And the last four years of it, I was barely ambulatory. And I have maybe about 23% of the muscle that I need. And I just, it, it's really starting to feel to me like cardiopulmonary rehab is not the place for me to be. So um, I don't want anybody getting worried that I'm just gonna quit and not get the rehab that I need. I'm gonna talk to Dr. Saya and explain my rationale. And I've actually found a few places that say, if it's gonna be rehab, it has to be people who specialize in lungs. They mention the fact that pulmonary rehab people have trouble exercising with a mask on. And they have their all their pulmonary people come in at the end of the day after the machines have all been completely wiped down from all the activity of the day. They're the only ones in the room and they don't have to wear masks. They spread them out over all the machines so that there's 10 feet, 12 feet between everybody and then they clean the machines up after the pulmonary people go home. But it's tailored to pulmonary, not cardio. And uh, so that's, you can tell it's bugging me because I'm rambling on about it and saying the th same thing th multiple times. But that's my plan is try to get that, that squared away. Plus you add in the fact that I'm going over there twice a week, almost all the time, for just that appointment. This is LA, it's 10 miles away, but it's half an hour drive time minimum. And I'm coming back at the beginning of rush hour, so sometimes it's 45 minutes or an hour on the trip home. So I go there, I spend twice as much time, and I don't feel like it helps me, and I feel like it may even be setting me back. So I'm gonna find out if I can just do my exercise at home. Sorry, I imagine that was really boring. I took a long time to explain it. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of video updates lately because <laughs> the last three or four days I always look like I just got out of bed. <laughs> so maybe that's a little vanity on my part. But So yeah, I'm on my own this week and I've been physically capable of doing everything I needed to do. Um, and uh, it's, it kind of makes for a, a boring update because, um, you know, I'm here by myself and life is just less interesting than it is when I've got my trusty sidekick with me and we're going to out to eat and we're so occasionally, like once every couple of weeks or something. And uh, we go out, we just started going out for walks and all that. So uh, I'm, I thought that I would be doing the same thing when he wasn't here, but I'm timid about going outside alone. I did it once and I enjoyed it and I took pictures, but I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. 
and uh, and I felt really like if I got in trouble I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be safe so uh, I didn't go out again especially when I've got such a nice one mile hallway if I walk it five times and it's easy to measure and if while I'm walking it if I feel tired I go right inside my door and sit on the little bench we put our shoes on and stuff so um, just feel safer uh, if I don't do too much alone outside the apartment um, but that's fine with me I'm not chafing at the bit to get outside I'm just uh, enjoying my own company but without anybody else here I'm missing my I, I was wishing today that I was near my rocks because one of my favorite things to do is sit a while looking at my rocks and I'll look at where they came from and what type of rock they are and research them online to see what cabochons are going for the stones that you cut to fit into jewelry and I can keep myself endlessly entertained just with my rock collection and um, and of course the view outside my Oregon window uh, gee, the Pacific uh, and and all the it's just I have a really uh, comfy little house that I'm starting to miss after basically I basically haven't lived at home since uh, about Christmas time except for uh, a couple of months and circuit rider was there so it's going to be a bit of an adjustment getting used to living on my own again now what else seems to me I was thinking of something but um, I continue some of you remember uh, from before the lung transplant project got really intense that I was um, a fairly politically active and uh, interested person and uh, a lot of my friends and I would talk politics on my Facebook page but to be quite honest with you there came a point where there was nothing new to be gained by watching the news you know why because everybody's lying everybody's lying you can't trust a thing that you see and I just decided why am I filling my head with other people's lies you know and so a lot of people think that's a cop-out I don't think it is a cop-out I think it helps me be a sane and calm person compared to the people who are yanked around by false news stories in whatever direction and constantly in a turmoil and I'm not sure I'm going back to it because you know what the Lord is in control and his will will be done and uh, you can't tell me that other than speaking the truth the average citizen can do anything about it and I already know how I vote and I already know what I believe and I don't need my mind being clouded by a bunch of people with an agenda that just lie constantly so TV news ain't where it's at it just isn't and all it does is muddy the waters to watch it and uh, if you're having trouble dealing with life and you're angry all the time and nothing makes sense to you and uh, and you just want to bite people's head off and um, that occupies a lot of your day you do whatever you want but my recommendation is disengage don't watch TV don't listen to the news you know there are I, I'm don't you know don't I'm not telling you what to do but I'm telling you what the reality is you aren't going to get anything you can believe from turning on the boob tube and voluntarily brainwashing yourself 
with all their drama. Um, so that's a word of love and advice and compassion and truth for you because I see so many people twisted up in knots over things they can't control. Maybe that's my AA background coming through, which is really all about my God and my faith background coming through. Lord, give us the courage to change the things we can. No, to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and most essentially, the wisdom to know the difference. That is where the whole thing comes together. If you personally cannot physically change something, turn it over to the Lord. Because to be quite honest, there's not much on this earth that we have power of. Whether we watch TV is one of those things. Okay, I know. First I was boring, then I was preachy. It's all for your own good. No, I'm kidding. That's a, per a parent thing that parents say. <laughs> but anyway, so I continue on being optimistic and doing what I can when I can. And uh, yesterday after the tremors went away was a great day. And today, it's funny, even as I've been talking, I've felt the tremors get a little better. They're, they get better towards the afternoon. It's all a matter of when. And so what I'm going to do after I say goodbye to you, beloveds, is I'm going to uh, take my phone and count out my steps and do 12 more laps like I did yesterday. And maybe I can go for 15 and it'll be three miles. Who knows? I will update you in the comment thread from this update once I post it. Thanks for putting up with me in my weird contemplative um, maternal bossy way to be happier by cutting out the cow pucky. A nice way to say it. <laughs> Because, man, oh, man, are we drowning in cow pucky. <laughs> I love you guys. And I'll update you again soon. And I'll let you know how walking goes today. And if anything exciting happens, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.